Hello. We're going to talk about Major General Sir Isaac Brock, hero of the War of 1812, more particularly his death at the Battle of Queenston Heights, and subsequently his four different burials, and then the number of memorials and monuments that can be found to him. Major General Sir Isaac Brock was the military commander and chief administrator of Upper Canada in 1812. He was born in 1769 in St. Peterport, Guernsey. At age 15, he joined the 8th or King's Regiment by buying a commission. In 1791, he transferred to the 49th Regiment. In 1797, he bought a commission as a lieutenant colonel and became the commanding officer of the 49th. Brock and the 49th Regiment were part of the Helder Expedition in 1799. In 1801, they were at the Battle of Copenhagen. In 1802, they were transferred to Canada. By 1807, Brock was promoted to Brigadier General and then went on to assume command of all the forces in Upper Canada in 1810. In 1811, he was promoted to Major General. Throughout this time, Brock continued to ask for a posting to Europe where the British Army was on active service. In 1812, permission finally came for Brock to go to Europe, but he declined the offer believing he had a duty to defend Canada against the United States. An active lead-from-the-front leader, Brock rushed to the Detroit River when he heard that Michigan Governor and General William Hull had invaded Canada at Sandwich, present-day Windsor. Brock traveled with reinforcements and met Shawnee leader Tecumseh in Amherstburg, where they planned their strategy. Brock and the British, with the support of Canadian militia and Indigenous warriors, forced Hull to surrender both Detroit and his armies. Brock rushed back to the Niagara frontier to face another American threat. Early in the morning of October 13th, American forces crossed the Niagara at Queenston, a village at the base of the Niagara Escarpment. The Americans crossed in the face of enfilading artillery fire and then musket fire from within the village from the British garrison there. The pinned-down Americans found a fisherman's path that allowed them to get to the top of the heights, where they were able to attack a British battery on the escarpment. Brock arrived in Queenston and determined if the Americans were not cleared off the heights, they would soon be well established as they continued to receive reinforcements. Brock personally gathered what troops he could and led a charge up the slopes of the heights where he was struck in the heart by a musket ball and fell. Brock civilian ADC, Lieutenant Colonel John McDonnell, also led a charge, receiving a fatal wound as well. As the battle slowed and Americans consolidated their position on the heights, Major General Roger Hale Schaefe assumed command and marched from Fort George with the remaining garrison. Indigenous warriors had pinned down the Americans in their position on the heights, and Chafe gathered the troops in the Chip in the Queenston area, along with a fresh body of troops that had arrived from Chippewa. This large force methodically advanced on the Americans, driving them from the heights and forcing their surrender. It is said during the battle, Brock's body was carried to the McCabe House in Queenston. Its location is marked by a plaque across the street from the Laura Secord House. On the 16th of October, 1812, the funeral for Brock and McDonnell occurred. The procession went from Government House in Niagara to Fort George, where there was a freshly dug grave in the northeast bastion of the fort. These photos are from a 2012 reenactment of Brock's funeral. If you're to travel to Fort George today, you can find this historic marker on that bastion. After the war, a campaign began among prominent Upper Canadians to honour Brock, whose dramatic death provided a rallying point during and after the war as a symbol of Canadian independence from the United States. This led to the erection of the first Brock's monument, a 135-foot Tuscan column with a viewing, viewing platform at the top. Construction began in 1823, and the monument was inaugurated October 13, 1824. The remains of Brock and McDonnell were reinterred in the base of the monument. In 1840, an explosive charge did serious and irreparable damage to the monument, although it failed to bring it down. The attack was presumed to have been orchestrated by Benjamin Lett, an anti-British agitator and an participant in the 1837 Upper Canada Rebellion. 
although a subsequent assize failed to confirm this. Brock and McDonnell's remains were removed after the monument's disassemblage and reinterred in the Ham Hamilton family burial grounds at Niagara Parkway and D Road in Queenston. A campaign to rebuild the monument began almost immediately. It took to 1852 for design to be selected, and construction began in 1853. The remains of Brock and McDonnell were reinterred a fourth time. The monument was officially inaugurated in 1859. In the town of Queenston, you can also find this smaller obelisk closer to the exact site of Brock's death. It was dedicated by Prince Edward, later King Edward VII, in 1860. Near this obelisk, you can also find this tribute to Brock's horse, Alfred. There are many other tributes to Brock. This marker in Guernsey is at the home where he had lived. This monument in St. Paul's Cathedral in London. This bust in Ottawa. We have Brock University in St. Catharines, and we have Brockville along the St. Lawrence River in Ontario. We also have Brock Seat in St. Mark's Cemetery in Niagara-on-the-Lake. And a new hat that was ordered by Brock that arrived after his death is now in the collection of the Niagara-on-the-Lake Museum. We also have this painting of the Battle of Queenston Heights by Major James Dennis of the 49th Regiment. It is in the collection of the Riverbrink Art Museum in Queenston. And the coat that Brock was wearing when he was fatally shot is on display in the Canadian War Museum in Ottawa. Major, Major General Sir Isaac Brock, a very large man who remains very large in the Canadian conscious.